My name is Punna Palo Piku. I am uh, Australian born Thai uh, from Australia. So um, half of my life I grew up in Australia and half of my life I grew up in Thailand. Uh, I now live in Thailand. My age is 58. my journey to Buddhism. Um, as I grew up as a, as a Thai, um, it is customary culturally that a, a, a Buddhist man or a Thai man would ordain as a, it's considered to ordain as a monk for one rain retreat, which is three months, to be considered a mature adult in Thailand. That's the culture aspect. I remember that when I was younger and so I put myself to ordination uh, about 23 years ago, 23 years ago. So I went through already ordained uh, significantly three, three months um, for that reason and that's how I um, get to know Buddhism a little bit deeper than just uh, my birthright as a Buddhist if you like. So that's a starting point. Um, uh, I, I continue to live as a Buddhist, understanding the, why I should be keeping my five precepts every day, uh, why I should be giving and sharing, and why should I purify my minds. So I use those uh, teaching, those principles in my daily lives as a lay Buddhist person, why I, you know, venture into life, um, I work, I had a family, uh, I now have a son who is 33 years old. So, uh, you know, I continue to take care of myself. I don't, I don't drink, even though I go to social events, weddings and so forth. Um, people offered me a glass of champagne, this and that, I refrain. I just take water or maybe some soft drink or some juice, you know, because one of the precept is to not to intoxicate the mind and the body. So as a lay person, so I continue to keep my precepts and that's how I live my, my, my life as a, as, a, as a Buddhist. As I age, as I age more, uh, I encounter, um, you know, some, some, some aching in my body and all of that. I seem to be not to be able to be as mobile as before as I age, you know. As I turned 50, I'm now 58, uh, realizing I'm not as young anymore. And so I began to notice that um, I'm being aware that uh, I started to question how long would I be living for? How long have I got left? You know, uh, what else is left for me to do on this earth, you know? Um, how do I take care of my family? And um, as a father, uh, what have I got to give my son in terms of lessons, in terms of lessons in life, right? Because of course, uh, um, I was not given a manual how to be a good father. So I have to learn, uh, where do I look for this wisdom? You know, and it seemed to me that I, I can't find this in a university, it's very superficial, but perhaps uh, Buddhism would give me some ideas of uh, how to live a life, and therefore I would learn something and I would be able to share with my son, you know. Um, so that's, uh, that's the beginning part of, of my journey here. Initially, I came in from the question, as I mentioned to you before, that it started the question of uh, what do I give my son? What do I, what I, you know, what gift should I give to my son, right? Um, as a father, because I know I will not last forever. Should I give money? Is it giving a house? Are these things uh, really a gift? Uh, is that something more of a valuable gift I can give, you know? And, and so uh, through my own Buddhist journey, uh, uh, studying, uh, experimenting with my own life, I, I came to realization that, that 
um, perhaps the teaching of the Lord Buddha will be beneficial to his life, uh, whether I'm alive or I'm gone already. So it seems to me that's the best gift I can give him. And so because my son speaks only English, uh, doesn't speak Thai like me, I speak Thai and English uh, as he grew up in Australia. Um, I've been looking for a program, a program that would train, you know, uh, a foreigner, if you like, and he is a foreigner in that way, um, you know, um, the teaching of the Lord Buddha. Where? You know, and um, in Thailand, there's not many places you can look for that would teach, get, uh, will allow you to ordain and learn Buddhism from the monk perspective, which means you get to learn it deeper than just a lay person. Uh, you get more time to be with yourself, uh, meditate, understanding who you are, uh, disconnecting from the rest of the world for 30 days. And so it seems to me uh, that um, I, you know, through, through the network of word of mouth, I get to hear this place called I Monastery. 2023, in the beginning of 2023, I was, um, I was uh, in a conversation with a couple of monks in searching for such a program. And I had an opportunity to uh, meet the found, uh, if you like, the founder of this uh, project uh, called uh, 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 Vulnerable Duke Pico. And, and um, I was telling him that I would like to invite my son to come and ordain here for 30 days. Um, as, I, as, I, as a father, as a Thai father, I would like to see him uh, mature as an adult Buddhist. And, um, and he said, sure, you know. So um, I actually went to have a conversation with my son and the good news is that he will join next year in 2024. But just at the end of the conversation, uh, Vulnerable Duke Pico said, what about the father, which is me, right? So I was presently uh, surprised of the invitation. I contemplate on it for about 48 hours. Then I gave an answer, uh, yes, I will join. You know, and so came this I Monastery 8, July 2023. Um, I joined the program for 30 days. I disconnected from the world for 30 days and allow my, you know, firstly, I wanted to know this program suited my son and so I could guide him along the way when he joined. But on the day one, I'm reminded by uh, the, the masters that what about allow yourself the gift, give yourself the gift to appreciate this for yourself for 30 days. So my perspective of joining, you know, have been shift in the 30 days in looking at myself. Um, so that's how I came to know uh, this program. So much just reading texts, so much just watching the videos, you know, um, uh, in a short space of time, um, I've learned I have learned uh, a monk's way of life, how it could be so simple. Um, really, there's not too many material to rely on at all. Um, I learned a life that I don't really rely to connect to the phone, uh, to my computer. You know, it's really, I don't need to listen to news. I don't need to hear any gossiping around me. Um, that allows me and afford me time so that I could actually meditate, um, be with myself, be with nature in a quietness and allow my mind, instead of wandering around, allow my mind to come back to this body and therefore allow me to distill and be, be at peace and relax with my body and allows me to discover a different kind of happiness coming from being with myself and, have, and closing down all my senses, closing my eyes and, you know, just discover the happiness from being still. So that's primary number one that I learned. Um, the second uh, thing that I learned was, you know, um, many sessions, uh, teacher, monk, masters, 
would do uh, would teach us a lot of sutra but in a uh, language that we understand today you know um, something that's practical that we can take away and use it and take it home and use it at home and at work so that's valuable to me it's not just reading a text and wondering do I understand this you know uh, uh, masters already distill the Dharma to the point that we can just pick it up and chew it and digest it and use it in our daily lives. So that was the second and so many learning out of that but one of the key learning I got out of this 30 day was you know attaching to things can lead to sufferings. Attaching to material, attaching to a particular relationship, attaching to certain unforgiveness, attaching to something, to certain anger, attaching to certain view that you hold your right, you know, this or this attachment, uh, you know, I was unconsciously, uh, you know, not aware it lead to my suffering. And I discovered that in this, in, in this 30 days journey. And I got a lot of work to do yet, but at least I'm now aware and probably the key sentence was there was one part uh, a teacher monk told a story that he went to a lecture and then there was one master teaching uh, one grand master was teaching and then somebody put a hand up and asked the question if you were to summarize all the teachers or the buddha's teaching in one sentence you know what would that be and that sentence was there is nothing to cling on and you hear it right listen to it again there is nothing to cling on everybody okay which mean my view that I think is so right I can't be attaching to that you know the anger I'm had against this person why am I holding it it's happened three years ago you know why am I not forgiving? Who's carrying the weight? I think it's me, right? There's nothing to attach on. This body, I'm 58. I'm no longer can run like the you know, gentleman who's 20 years old. It's aging and will age even more. Can I control it? You can answer for yourself, right? So there's nothing to cling on, even this body. So when I hear that, it's like, you know, big light bulb goes up you know and I actually from that moment on I make a decision in my mind I told the master that I learned this and I make a choice not to cling on anything of course I have to learn behaviorally to change myself to transform myself but that was the biggest learning in, in, in these 30 days for me the third part that I learned that I be here in 30 days that's four part, okay? So my third part is that there is, we learn how to live with uh, other people who came from 11 countries, different uh, culture background, different thought and beliefs, different, different behavioral. You know, I discover some likes and some don't likes. But I would have to learn how to get along with everybody. Because if I don't learn how to get along with everybody, Firstly, I'm not going to be at peace. And secondly, I can't share that peace with anyone. So why would I cling on to my like or I don't like? There's no reason to cling on. And fourthly, what I love about this is that I have now brothers, brothers in 11 countries. You know, in these 30 days, to some level, we got to know each other. And now we learn how to bond, uh, how to have a good friends. What is not a good friends? We learn all about that, you know. How to make decision, you know, a good decision. What's bad decision? All of this we learn in these 30 days. So I won't get any more deeper than that. So these four components is what I got. A lot of people believe that Buddhism is a religion. 
I would tell you is not. It's a way of life. So in regard of what you believe is, what religion you took, if the, out of respect, if those religions does not limit you to embrace uh, additional th um, philosophy that serve you, perhaps you allow yourself the time to take a look. It's a way of life. You know, for example, um, Buddhism or not, we promote uh, a concept called uh, UG5, you know, Universal Goodness 5. Essentially, it's five things, guys. One is cleanliness. Secondly, is orderliness. Thirdly, is politeness. Fourthly, is punctuality. And fifthly, is being mindful. Can that be used in all religion? Can that be used in, to everybody? Do you want a clean house? Do you like an orderly house? Do you like people to speak to you nicely? Do you like people who arrive on time? Do you like people who, sp who are mindful when talking to you and working with you? I know you, you, you have an answer in your mind, right? It's applied to everybody. It's a way of life. We get taught this thing in these 30 days. You know, if you have somebody, you have your husband, you have your son, you know, you would love them to appreciate this. Perhaps this is the 30 days gift you can give. The first one is if you clean, chances are you organize your life to be very clean. You design your life to be very clean. You probably would not be harming anything. You provide, you actually offer safety to other people, other lives. You want, you're, more, you're more respecting other people's life. Secondly, when you get organized orderliness, thing does not go missing, right? You probably have 10 pens, you know, writing. But you don't need 10. It's because you couldn't find it it's somewhere else, so you, ha you, you keep buying more pens. But if you organize it well, you only need a few, so you save resources. And you don't go and borrow and steal other people's stuff. Everybody loves their own possession, right? Thirdly, when you're polite, you don't you're mindful about people's feeling. You don't actually encroaching on trespassing any, you know, any uh, relationships, right? Everybody loves their partner, for example, and I'm sure you love your partner, and you don't want anybody to take your partner away, right? So being polite and mindful and having a um, gentle conversations, you know, you uh, chances are you give safety to other people as well. Being pancho, right? What's pancho? You're honoring other people's time, right? If you honor other people's time and you, um, can you say to yourself that you are honorable? You are a man of your words. You are being truthful, right? You are genuine, yes? So that's why, uh, you know, being on time is you actually giving the respect to other people and yourself. And obviously, if you are mindful, you don't drink alcohol, you don't this and that, you're keeping your mind mindful. And so what does that give you? That gives you the sanity, right? The peace of mind. And your decision making will be quite clear. And so you can be assured that whatever decision you make, you make it out of your best mindfulness. That's why one should not intoxicate this body and the mind. I'm also a person who meditate on, on and off myself. Um, not so consistent. Um, gradually, I learned to appreciate more. Half an hour here, 45 minutes there, one hour here. Slowly, slowly appreciating. 
But being here in 30 days allows me to practice meditation more. And so now after these 30 days, I will be, I will be practicing two hours a day. I think um, um, what's important is for, we, we, for us, for me to serve myself and serve others, I need to be uh, sane, you know, I need to be um, mindful. So meditation gives me the ability to be mindful and raise awareness in whatever situation that comes to me, in decision making, in handling things. So meditation gives me a lot of, uh, you, you know, I, I will step in life more carefully, more carefully, rather than allow emotion you know, my anger, my dislike, you know, my hatred, my greediness, right? My ignorance drive me. And sometimes I don't even know, I don't know what I don't know. So meditation gives me, you know, waking up, you know, and run my, li run my life as, you know, as mindful as possible. People think uh, to be a Buddhist monk in Theravada, you have to ordain and, and, you, and you cannot come out. Most people think like that, right? But no. In Thailand, in a project called Ai Monastery in the northern part of Thailand, in the forest, you can actually ordain for 30 days. Perhaps you want to go to holiday, Europe, the US, Australia, China, right? Or India, you want to go for 30 days. It's still a holiday, right? But you, you might entertain your body, but in actual fact, your mind might be tiring. You know, what about consider a 30 day holiday, a spiritual holiday, a gift you give it to yourself, right? Allow yourself to disconnect for all the, for the busyness of the world. You know, from your mundane life, it's only temporary, 30 days, you know, give yourself the gift, the opportunity for your mind to come back to yourself, be at peace, learn how to handle your own stress, learn to be confident, learn to make decisions better, essentially learn to how handle your life better. If that's something that interests you, this is the place for you. For the Nepalese uh, people, I just want to say you guys are so lucky. This is the place where Lord Buddha was born 2,500 years ago, right? It's not Thailand, it's not Ai Monastery. It's 2005 years, he actually born in Lumpini. So you have a, such a gift there in Lumpini, unique to Nepal, not to anywhere else, okay? So I would encourage you, whether you're Buddhist or non-Buddhist, to go and visit and pay respect, learn about his life, right? You know, uh, and then learn all the teaching, visit all the sacred sites, you know? because you have the access right there in Lumpini. I'm here in Thailand, I don't have access like you. I can fly there, but you can be there as often as you like, right? On an important Buddhist day, I would really encourage you to be there. And not just learn, and not just, not just tradition, you know? But spend a bit of time, meditate, be there get connected to the Lord Buddha and his birthplace. And you might find peace right there. Whether you believe Buddhist, Buddhism or not, whether you believe heaven or hell or not, you can take this as a personal development journey for yourself if you like, okay? Something that adds value to your life if you're willing to allow yourself the opportunity to be, you know, to be here in Ima Street or to visit Lumpini. I humbly, I'm humbly invite you 
to give yourself the gift to learn about yourself and discover a different pathway to happiness. May Lord Buddha bless you and your family and forevermore.